to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. Isn't it like a record amount of fog? I mean, you were showing that yesterday. A number, record number of fog alerts. Fog alerts, holy cow. Yeah, well, anyway, we have you covered, of course, the Weather Channel does from coast to coast. We'll talk about all of that. And, the, uh, you know, it doesn't seem really stormy out there right now, but it's the fog that's kind of stealing the show. Yes, it is. Although I found one spot without fog. Only one. <laughs> Where's that? Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix, I'm sure <laughs> producer Tori is like that. Yes, yes, yes. But most other spots, I mean, you mentioned the, the fog alerts, they've expanded. So we've got more today oh. than yesterday. It's not just top to bottom, but now we got more than northeast into the foggy mix. And the rain is so far north. Yes, in places that you would think be 48. I'm watching Mount Washington because uh -oh. they are 32 degrees and light snow. They could rain. They could rain. Could That's at 6,000. I know. Wow. New Hampshire, 6,000 feet in the mountains. Yeah. Raining? It's, yeah. Wow. Well, rinse and repeat. That is the theme of today's big deal. Challenges here starting in a very soggy Milwaukee. Yes, rain. And thanks to our virtual view technology here in Veterans Park, you can see the rain, the fog kind of settling in like in so many cities. Make sure to give yourself some extra time to get from one destination to another as both rain and patchy fog is going to reduce visibility on the roadways. And it's mild. 39 degrees in Minneapolis. Guess our average high right now. 30. That's the average high temperature, but we're sitting at 39 degrees in the morning. We've got rain that has moved through. The fog is left behind. Visibility running about a half mile. Um, there, there is a wind chill factor making it feel colder out there. So overall, just a very raw morning in and around Milwaukee and up towards Green Bay, where it's raining now very steadily. Rain back extending towards Cedar Rapids. Minneapolis, not raining, but it's foggy. And we're sitting at 35 degrees at what? 7 o'clock in the morning here or 8 o'clock in the morning in Minneapolis. Now we look at temperatures in Michigan all the way up through northern Michigan. We are above freezing. Marquette we're sitting at 35. So for everyone here, whether it's raining or, or not, it's all about the fact that it's above freezing and that's causing its own problems. It's part of the reason why we have the fog. It's also why we've got these ice jams happening and driving some flooding concerns. So in Grundy and Will County in Illinois near the town of uh, Wilmington, we've got considerable risk of flash flooding here. There is ice jam flooding. There's been a water rise of about three feet. There's some evacuations that have happened. You know, flooding caused by an ice jam in the lower Kankakee River, but also from the snow melt and from the rain. So it's really everything coming together. Dangerous ice flows or shifting of ice here could also damage structures along the shore. So that's another concern for you right there. Also keep an eye on parts of the Vermilion River as well in uh, in Illinois. Uh, you know, we're going to be watching the Iroquois River into Indiana. We're going to be watching that concern today because we see how mild it is with all green on the map. It's all rain. We get rain across Wisconsin, Milwaukee, more rain coming your way. We'll get rain across Michigan, lower Michigan, you know, all the way up to the north, Traverse City. We've got rain coming your way, Detroit. It'll be rain, not snow. So watching, of course, what's going on here to melt, it can cause what is known as ice jams. And meteorologist Alex Wilson explains exactly what they are and the problems they can cause. Philadelphia, you guys are all looking so kind of early springish out there, right? It's foggy, it's raining, temperatures are, are not hot but or warm even here, but they're mild compared to what they could be. And Boston, for us, we keep that kind of weather through the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. But through Sunday evening, temperatures start dropping, and you can see what happens. By Monday, we're going from the upper 30s to the teens. But in between there, there is going to be a period of time where we change over to snow. Monday's forecast right now, high temperature of 36 degrees. As the cold air comes in, you know, we're going to see snowflakes aloft. It's all about, you know, can they can they make it all the way to the surface? And if they're heavy enough, they could. And so that's what we want to watch. I mean, the system that Greg just talked about is what we're going to be keeping an eye on. It moves through. It heads off the coast. The moisture gets thrown back into the northeast. And at this time, cold air is going to be tracking in. So it's all about the cold air. And there's an old forecast adage I learned at Penn State which is predict the high, predict the snow, because you need to have the high pressure, which is the source of the cold air, in order to get the snowfall. And so that's what we need to watch for. In this case, it really is truly all about the, you know, how much cold air will there be, and especially at the surface, how much cold air will we have hanging around. So Sunday will be that transition day. We'll see the snow, I think, inland areas with a much better chance of piling up. Um, we'll have to, again, keep, well, this will be a nowcast, really, to see where the biggest snowfall rates are, to see who gets, you know, maybe anywhere from five to eight inches 
of snowfall, perhaps a little bit more. Now let's watch this Saturday with rain first. Pittsburgh, yes, rain. It comes in as rain, but then the cold air starts filling in and we see that changeover. This is going to happen um, throughout the morning hours on Sunday, the New York State Thruway. We'll see that all the way in I-90 in the Mass Pike as we get through Sunday night and then Monday hanging on to some snow. But for Boston, you know, that moisture is pulling away as the cold air is filtering in. So we'll, we'll see. Boston, not a huge snowfall event there, but, you know, a chance. And winter's not over. I think that's the key message here. Winter's not over. I mean, even when it's warm, and you mentioned this all the time like when it's warmer than average in January doesn't mean it's too warm to snow right exactly exactly right. So yeah well you know uh, four teams have battled the elements also yeah I don't That's know I, I would chicken out you would chicken out yeah totally but I mean <laughs> 70, the helicopter lasted 72 flights in years it's not enough for me not enough I need a million I know the helicopter had problems with the cold on Mars and so I feel like I, I feel that yeah. I would, I'm, it might be too cold for me. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're, we, you know, there's time. We can change our minds. There is time, and there's yeah. more time in the show. Well, we'll come back. We'll talk more about all the changing weather happening this weekend, including the risk for severe. But why not? It makes for a good story. It and does. look, you got yeah. bad weather. You need to pull over, take a bathroom break. There you go. Party Have time. a dance party. <laughs> and Dancing Queen. I I think that's a perfect song for that. Do you? Perfect song. Yes. See show you what's coming your way as we see our big system poised off the coast. Look at all these isobars. This is a strong low and that is going to help pivot in the moisture. We're already seeing some of that right now approaching the coast well out ahead of the actual core of the system. Look at that rain in western Oregon, northern California and a little bit still happening in Seattle. Snow levels are yes still very high and that's not really going to change but it's affecting uh, maybe some of the highs to travel across the Cascades. Same thing for the Sierra. I mean we're, we're looking at 30 four degrees of Reno. It's not going to snow there, but you know, we will see some snow at higher spots. Um, right now, Medford and Oregon, we are reporting rainfall. The rainfall will only get more intense and heavier, adding up to inches. In fact, quite heavy along the coast from Washington and Oregon down into Northern California. And then the moisture kind of spreads inland, the whole thing kind of weakening as it goes, but it'll get us some snow in some of the higher spots there in the mountains of Idaho. So let's uh, show you today rain continuing to increase in coverage. Seattle, Portland, and even over towards Pendleton, we could get a little bit of light rain. Spokane, it'll be rain, probably not snow, and we'll get some of that here on the lighter side, but that's typical for you here. Then we watch your Saturday forecast. It's still rainy. Look at this, and more coming in, some heavy at times. Sunday morning, you wake up, it is still raining in Seattle. Oh, there is no sun to be found here, that's for sure, because we get a brief break in the clouds, but then there's more rain poised right off the coast. So just for this portion of everything, this is through Sunday, we're looking at some very heavy rain, potential even three to five inches of rain potentially a few spots getting into five to eight inches of rain uh, definitely the, uh, the elevation I think will matter a little bit squeezing out more moisture now you're wondering, does the rain get all the way down the coast into Central California? No. In fact, the Bay Area and then over towards Santa Clara, Levi Stadium, great looking weather here for the 49ers and the Lions. What a game is going to be. Good game, good weather. Temps are going to be in the 70s. This is where you get to see a little bit of, uh, of sunshine there. Enjoy that. Um, otherwise, you know, mild. You know, mild in San Francisco. Um, here, too, mild. So it means the snow levels are very high, Greg. Mild is the reason why we have all that fog out there. Yeah, and look at that snow map that you're showing the up tomorrow. Now, there is some thunder and lightning at the moment on the map, and you can see that pretty far south, most of it over the Gulf of Mexico, a little bit here right along the coast of Louisiana. Elsewhere, it's mainly a, just a cloudy and kind of murky start for most of us. Um, Atlanta, Charlotte, open towards Myrtle Beach here, if it's, you know, if it's not foggy, it's pretty cloudy out there here. And so that's going to be the trend for today. You're not really drying out anywhere. In fact, we bring in the moisture. You see that coming up along the deep south. Today, in fact, by this evening, here comes our next disturbance, really pulling in that moisture in Oklahoma and Texas, especially northeast Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Jackson. We are going to get more rain after one of our wettest January days on record. It comes back today, and that is a concern. We've got the rivers in the background here because, you know, river flooding is a concern. That's how much rain we've had. We talk totals that have ranged from five to more than 10 inches of rainfall, and now we bring in another at least an inch, maybe even one to two. Uh, 
uh, and that's just going to exacerbate the existing problems that we have. Jumping north, we've got showers out there right now, rain in Green Bay, Chicago. It's not raining at the moment, but it is 39 degrees, and it's pretty foggy again for you there in Detroit. Over in Cleveland, the fog is around. The rain is going to be expanding across Wisconsin. We'll get some rain showers in Chicago by this evening. All across lower Michigan, we've got rain. It is rain and not snow. Maybe extreme northern Michigan, uh, the UP, perhaps we get a little bit of wintry weather. But look, temperatures are very marginal, maybe 32 degrees. That's about as cold as we will see. Then we jump to the northeast. Now, it's mainly rain here. I was looking specifically at Vermont and New Hampshire trying to find snow this morning. There's not many spots. Mount Washington was one of the few, but it's sitting right at 32 degrees. So there is cold air. You can see that in Maine. That's the only spot that's truly cold, like in Caribou, we were in the teens. But that's it. That's all I can find. It kind of feels like spring is really trying to make an early arrival. Yeah. I'm not sure it's here to stay, but the fact that it's here brings the threat of severe weather. Right, right, and that's going to ramp up tomorrow. Yes, mm -hmm. and we're going to be watching that in yeah. the South. Jen, thank you very much. That's Sting. Yeah, a lot of the active weather has been in the Pacific Northwest, which remains, again, the case today, and that's where we're going to see the rainfall um, and maybe some disruptions to travel. We have rain for you around Seattle. It's raining um, down through Portland right now. Medford is raining at the moment, and we're going to see that continue. You notice our temperatures are going up into the 50s. Snow levels are going to be very high. Hi. Yet again, this is another mild system coming in from the Pacific. We see that moisture getting steered towards the coast with rainfall continuing through Sunday, some of it heavy at times, and adding up, especially along the coast. But even in the, the upslope areas, getting into the Cascades, that real, this map kind of speaks to just how warm it is. We see rain in those upslope areas here, not snow. The snow levels are very high, considering just how mild the, the pattern is. Rainfall, though, with the heaviness uh, of it, could cause some flash flooding. Got to watch right along Gold Beach maybe down towards Crescent City in California. We'll see that rain continuing here as we get through uh, again all day today and through the entire weekend, Greg. By the looks of to go as we count down to the kickoff, the Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. The final four teams will leave it all on the field during NFL's Championship Sunday. Nate Burleson with our partners at CBS. Join meteorologist Stephanie Abrams to break down which team has the weather advantage. Very interesting. We're talking about this, too. You're going for the Lions. Well, you know, I kind of would like them to win, but I feel like they're going to... I don't know. we got the blue ice. I feel like that's good luck right now. we got the blue ice in northern Michigan. Uh, Kansas City or Ravens? Either one, I think the Ravens are going to win. No matter, what, no matter what you're voting for. No matter, no matter who I want to win, I think the Ravens. Yeah. Last that long. It might just be a few days. And, you know, the, it, was, it was cold. We had, a, what, a good 15-day stretch of really cold air. We got this blue... Oh, I don't know if it's still there. I can't imagine that it is, actually. It's been so mild. That is stunning, actually. And, you know, it, it, as you said, it's not common. We had just the right conditions yeah. to get this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's you want to say go and look at it now, but it's going to be maybe too late because of the warm air that's coming in that's going to change it up. I know. I mean, it's so stunning here. The step, it's not the only place it happens. It happens yeah. in some spots in Wisconsin as well. But it's just all about the red light, the red wavelength, not being able to get out, basically. So all you see is the blue. You know, it kind of reminds me of thunderstorms that have a lot of ice in them. Sometimes they have this at least somewhat hue. Maybe it's a bit greener, but the idea is the same. You have the ice and the light interacting with it in the right mm -hmm. way with the right composition, and you get these spectacular colors. What do you think came first, the choice for the color of the Detroit Lions uniforms oh. or this? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. What Honolulu blue. I like it. Honolulu yeah. blue. Let's talk about football. Yes. Let's get the forecast. All right. So the first game here, uh, Sunday, 3 o'clock, this is uh, in Baltimore outdoors. Um, Kansas City is visiting uh, the Ravens, and it's going to rain. Not much wind, but it's going to be kind of wet and cold. Certainly, the weather is not going to be, I think, making them feel that much out of their comfort zone. I mean, I, the Chiefs have had all the weather this year. Have they had this yet? You know, they've the had rain? they had oh. sub-zero. They had snow. So, we'll yeah. see. Uh, you think the Ravens have it to win. I do. I have a feeling the Ravens are going to win this one. They're at home, and uh, they're, I think, the better team. But I don't know. I'm kind of rooting for Kansas City also. I'm happy either way. That's the chicken way out of it. <laughs> Jen? I'm a Taylor Swift fan, so I am rooting for, voting for the Chiefs. <laughs> Let's look at the two quarterbacks. Yes, we got Patrick yeah. Mahomes and Lamar Jackson here. Patrick, uh, the better statistically passer, but Lamar Jackson this year is playing at the MVP level. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. so we'll see. We'll see if the weather plays a role. Um, Let's look at the 49ers and Lions. I mean, this game looks phenomenal weather-wise. Yes, this is the second game, Pacific time, 3.30 through 6.30 Eastern time. 
The weather's perfect, Jen. I'd like to go and watch this one in person. You but can. I'm not going to be there. I'll be here in Georgia instead. One year anniversary of winter storm Leon, and that was AKA Snowmageddon this Sunday. We're going to look back at on other past winter events that have crippled Atlanta. Meteorologist Chris Bruin dives into why these past events can bring the city to a standstill. We all have our stories from that event here. You ended up having to stay at the Weather Channel. I slept on the floor here that night. That certainly, that was just a horrible event. So many stories. One, uh, one I won't call it a funny story, but now looking back, I, I guess it is, was a colleague who had to just leave their car on the side of the road and walk home and then had to go back, walk back a day or two later to get the car and brought the wrong keys. Oh my gosh. And it was miles. It wasn't like it was oh. a short couple of blocks. But that's the extent. People were stuck, you know, miles away from home, and you couldn't move. It was gridlock. Countless stories like that yeah. in Atlanta, and especially in North Georgia, elsewhere. It was awful. I mean, when you have that kind of ice, it, it shuts everything down, yeah. grinds it to a halt, literally. It was truly a perfect storm, though, of events. You know, the cold mm -hmm. air came in, and that little slushy layer that was first froze, and then you had just a slab of ice with snow on top of that. And, you know, it was... There was not, no way to treat it without, you know, the, the equipment. You know, in the south, we just don't have that compared mm. to the north. I remember waking up in the morning sore back and all because I laid out on the floor here at night during the wedge. I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? I thought this was the south. But, you know, it can happen here, too. It can happen. Interesting, though, what a change of events 10 years later. Last night in Atlanta, we had thunderstorms this weekend. Uh, maybe in the south, mm -hmm. but in the north, we're actually going to see some cold air coming in, and we'll get back to winter as scheduled. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying anyway. Look, we got some cold air Sunday night in Pittsburgh. Maybe a chance of some snow showers, rain mixed with snow. Not nearly as cold as it's been. But or Jen's, could be, you know. Or could be. And Jen is right about that. But at least it's a reminder that we're not done with the winter yet. Yeah, now the system in the south that will bring more thunderstorms scoots off the coast. Mm -hmm. So now we've got a coastal low. We do have a source of cold air. You were talking about that. In Canada and in parts of Alaska, in regions far to the north, there is cold air available. Some of that tries to leak into the yeah. northeast, at least just enough of it. And so it's all about the timing. Will the cold air get here yeah. when the precip is still here? And, you know, if it does, then you get, you know, maybe a half foot plus of snowfall. And then, of course, wind with a st strong storm system winding up off the coast. The wind is going to be a factor, certainly for the coastal location. Yeah, your timing, rain comes in on Saturday, Sunday. It's all about that changeover. And then we could have some snow then lingering into Monday. We are here with you through the mid-morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. That's right. The Weather Channel, of course, has you covered from coast to coast. And, you know, Jen, it feels like, as you were talking about, you know, warnings and advisories for fog. Yes. It's everywhere from top to bottom. And just the fact that it's so mild, but you can't really enjoy the mildness because it's either foggy or rainy. It's weird. It's a very weird pattern. I actually can't stop looking at the tower cams and observations because of all this fog. So the point that you raise is a really important. The denser and colder that air mass is, the slower it's going to go away. And the interaction between the warmth and the cold brings us the fog and gives us this nasty sort of combination. That is such a good point. Cold air is such a boss, really. It's a boss. And the yeah. fact that this warm air has been able to kind of overtake it. Yeah. That says something. That does say something. Yeah, and it takes its time. You know, if it were yeah. maybe not that cold in air mass, it would have been gone long ago. But it held its grip and wouldn't let go. Yeah. Well, it's still here. And yep. rinse and repeat is the theme of today's video.